Grant. My god brother Ramdas Abhi Ramdas, that's an interesting name, <laughs> one of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates, he told me that in 1977, that is like a half a year later, in Mayapur, Srila Prabhupada gave that order again to the other artists. And he pulled out a like two inch by two inch thick book of very simple line drawings and he said this book is for illiterate people they take just a few words of a verse and they make it into a picture for illiterate people so he told them as well I want lots and lots of picture books on all the verses like Nivritta Tassaya Upagiya Manam, the person who has no material desires because he's worshipping Krishna. So show that and show that. And they also couldn't figure out how to show so many subtle philosophical points one after another in picture. But still, that was Prabhupada's order to them as well. So he stressed it again and again. We're just all waiting for some demigod to come and figure it out. <laughs> because, you know, it's easy, we were talking, that it's easy to do philosophical paintings when it's, um, when it's Maya pulling one way and Krishna pulling another way. And, you know, there's that staircase in the Bhagavad Gita. You can make that into pictures, but to do so many for every verse, that was a puzzle and hopefully somebody will come and make it not a puzzle. They tried many times but couldn't figure it out. So let's see what happens. So now we're going to talk about the, um, the paintings. As far as I can see, this is my original, which I did in about 1971. And um, when Prabhupada saw this painting, he said, she has understood the mood, which wasn't true, but he knows that the information would get back to me and I would be very encouraged. So, it isn't that Srila Prabhupada just gave the basics and then Srila Gurudev took it from there. There's so much ecstatic moods in Prabhupada's teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which is the summary of his teach of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Uh, and Prabhupada writes in, in the introduction there, not writes, because the introduction to the <coughs> teachings of Lord Chaitanya are four lectures that he gave in April of 1967 on um, Chaitanya Charitamrita about how Krishna had the desire to enjoy and that desire manifested as Srimati Radhika and therefore one must read the tenth canto and he told all about the pranaya, the love of Radha and Krishna and she's a transformation of that love and the pastimes are manifestations of her love for Krishna. What to speak of Chaitanya Charitamrita the Kila Kinchi Tabavs. We were painting for Prabhupada in 1975 when he was um, doing the Chaitanya Charitamrita rush, where he insisted that the artists, the, the editors, all the press people make um, all the books. We had already done two volumes in New York before the entire press moved to Los Angeles where it would have more facility. Lots of rooms, lots of more devotees to help, lots of more press equipment. And then in Los Angeles in June, mid-June, 
he came and on his morning walks he expressed not the desire but the man the demand that in the next two months he wants the rest of the 15 volumes of Chaitanya Charitamrita and the two volumes of Fifth Canto printed with all the pictures in it. <laughs> so we had to read the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita to pick out pictures. And there Prabhupada talks about not only in the verses because he's translating, but utilizing Srila Viswanath, I'm sorry, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur's and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada's commentaries, he discussed Kila Kinchi Tabhav and so many ecstasies in so many chapters. So I don't agree with those who say Prabhupada introduced the male aspect of, of the absolute truth and then Gurudev came and glorified the female aspect. So this was that picture that we did for, I believe it was teachings of Lord Chaitanya. He, he brought them in a tin trunk, sorry, a tin trunk. And then he used that, once he took out all the Bhagavatams and was distributing them, he um, used that tin trunk as his first desk <laughs> uh, in his apartment at 26 Second Avenue. So at my initiation, he gave me the first three volumes. But I was so new and so unsure that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life that I said, well, if I change my mind, can I give the books back to you? <laughs> so he could have just started preaching, but instead he said, yes. <laughs> because he's, he knows the truth. He's Tri Kalagyan. So also this, um, you can see the, the cover. You know, he just wanted to give knowledge all over the place. So if you open up the cover, you'll see that on the cover, he numbers everything. He numbers the Mahatattva, he numbers the Goloka planet. And then on the inside, in the flaps, he explains what everything is in great detail. So the, was it the first picture I ever did? He, no, the first picture I ever did was, um, he gave me a photograph pulled out of his Elmira up in his quarters of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan party at uh, Shriva Sangam. And then this would be the second. He told me just, just do that portion with Radha and Krishna and the cow. And then he would come in and talk with me about the picture, um, you know, sitting squatting in that Indian way that Indians do <laughs> and in that position of half sitting Hare Krishna of half sitting he would uh, give me information like <coughs> paint the palms red and so many things like that and these uh, trees are all desire trees and then after I finished he had me paint on the corner of the painting uh, he wrote it on a small piece of paper, as he often did when he wanted me to make uh, a mantra at the bottom of a painting. Um, Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha Jagat Hitaya Krishnaya Govindaya Namo Namaha. I uh, offer my obeisances to the Lord of the Brahmanas, the Lord of the senses, the Lord of the cows and the gopis, the Lord of the land, Brahmanya Devaya Krishna. And this one I did from a uh, Indian print. And Prabhupada was using it on the cover of his matchless gifts. And therefore, uh, the picture here, you may notice that it looks slightly different up there. Not because the painting was comfortably made up to here, oh, yeah. but then because Prabhupada was going to use this on the cover of his book, Yay. Matchless Gifts, which uh, came from his lectures that he gave in New York City. We added to the top so that we could put the title here. Oh. We opened up the canvas and restretched it. So when um, I was there in the room, Srila Prabhupada was looking at these pictures. He said, in the beginning, 
she could not paint. But by the process of Shravana Kirtanam Vishnu, which actually he had been lecturing about uh, in Vrindavan at that time, uh, Prahlad Maharaj's discussions, Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu Smarana Padasevanam, and how that gives all intelligence to the soul. So he said, in the beginning she could not paint, but by the process of Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, the talent came out. And, that, and it was after that that he gave the order for the picture book project. And I was actually doing the picture book project as best I could, making many, many paintings. And then when I came to Florida, one devotee suggested that I just make picture books as comic books. So then we made two comic books, um, but not with the, um, how the Indians did it. We put in Prabhupada's philosophy and the dialogue and the narration. And then it was 1992, I started the comic book graphic novel project in 1990. In 1992, um, I met Shula Gurudev for the first time in Vrindavan, 10 minutes from here, at Rupsanath and Gaudiya Mutt. And my god sister, Aditya, she suggested, well, you're going to see him, why not bring some presentation? So I brought the comics, and one was about um, Krishna killing Arisasura and Keshi in Vrindavan and then going to kill Kamsa in Mathura. And the other one was about Krishna marrying Rukmini. So I gave the Krishna marrying Rukmini to Gurudev, and he looked at it and tossed it. <laughs> He said, why can't you do something of Braj? And that's when it all started. And then over the next months, because I actually never liked to paint, but every time I try to get out of it, Prabhupada would, I would write to Prabhupada and he'd say things like, no, your talent is painting. I said, can I just switch to book distribution like the lucky Ganga Mahadas who would appear in the future? Can I just do book distribution? And he would always write back, no, your specific talent is painting, but you can go on book distribution sometimes because even in spiritual life, variety makes one more fit for work. So I would always go, he said I can go out once a day, so I went from Mangal Artik one day to Mangal Artik the next day, one day. <laughs> um, okay, so then, I was talking to Gurudev gradually about the picture book project. And then finally he said, but sometimes I would leave him and go to Bombay and work with some artists who, who were trying to help me with that, some Indian artists. And then finally Gurudev just told me, not all the instructions of Sri Guru are permanent. <coughs> not all the instructions of Sri Guru are permanent. Some are permanent, obviously, and some are for the disciple when he's at a certain stage of his development and when he comes to another stage or is ready for another stage, then um, the instruction changes. So then I was so happy. I stopped painting. I thought for the rest of the life, <laughs> I'll just do bhajan and ecstasy. And <laughs> but then uh, in September of 92, Gurudev said, can you paint my heart? And then that whole thing happened with Say the Queen. Uh, well, we're gonna, we just started, so we're going to go around and check. Um, we had all the paintings lined up on the wall. So a lot of the paintings were done by me. So he said, oh, Shamarani has done most of the paintings, so being a young devotee, which I still am, I just got so proud, thinking that I'm the greatest. And then, one of the paintings, because pride cometh before the fall, one of the paintings was for Prabhupada's Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, no, Teachings of Lord Chaitanya, which is Krishna has a headache, I'm sorry, which is Krishna lamenting in the bushes, lamenting in the kunjas, 
for Radharani when she left the Rasa dance and now he's searching for her. So, so I use myself as the model with my own hairstyle and Krishna's sitting like that in the kunj and Radharani's walking some other place in the forest. So when Prabhupada saw that, right after my pride swelled, he said, this never happened. Krishna never lamented like that. And then I said, of course he did. And then I quoted the verse from the, um, it's in Chaitanya Charitamrita, but it's also quoted in the 30th chapter of um, teachings of Lord Chaitanya. When Krishna couldn't find Radharani, he sat in the bushes or the kunjas and began to lament. So Prabhupada said, at least he never lamented like that. <laughs> so I was totally crushed. Um, and then uh, I couldn't concentrate on anything he was saying for the rest of the meeting because I was lamenting so much. <laughs> and then finally he wanted to make me feel better, so he said, okay, this painting can be Krishna has a headache. <laughs> and so that painting went in the Baltimore temple under that name. <laughs> so this is another painting. This big one was also a, um, can we turn the fan off? Was another painting that Merle Dar did as a watercolor and Prabhupada liked that a lot as well. And then this is a copy of his big one. These two small ones are originals. Mm -hmm. This one was done by Merle Dar for, I believe it was for the Krishna book. And then this one was uh, done by me of um, obviously Mother Yasoda feeding Krishna. And this was for his Adi Lila, chapter, Adi Lila, volume one of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where it talks about how um, in Prabhupada's translations and purports, how Krishna says that he's bound by the Brajbasi's love. He forgets the hymns of the Vedas and he becomes controlled by the um, chastisements of Mother Yasoda and the abuses of the gopis. You must remember that. And so here, uh, this was already 1974-ish, or 75 is when we started the Chaitanya Charitamrita paintings. So in the Krishna book, when we did the Krishna book, we had read in um, Prabhupada's uh, summary of the um, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu called Nectar of Devotion, uh, it was explained there that Mother Yasoda is the color of a blue lotus flower or a white lotus flower with blue veins. So we changed all the golden Mother Yasodas to blue. There was about five that we had done for the Krishna book. And when Prabhupada heard that or saw it, he said, no, paint her golden. So then we, for all the other books, we kept painting her golden. So then here I meet Shula Gurudev in 1992, and in his Damodarastikam, it's explained how um, she's blue, bluish, and in the Braj Mandala Parikrama book, it also ex explains how Krishna is blue because Mother Yasoda is blue. He has her beauty. So whenever we would do a painting for, whenever I would use the paintings that I did for Srila Prabhupada's books, for Srila Gurudev's books, because I had a contract with the BBT that I can use any of mine for any GVP publication or calendar or anything. Mm -hmm. We would always, um, I always asked a graphic designer to tint her bluish. So then when Gurudev ordered me four times to do the, um, he said, just like ISKCON has a large, um, what do you call that? A uh, 
table, <coughs> coffee table size art books. They have several. Mm -hmm. So I want you to do a coffee table size art book of all the paintings that you did for your Prabhupada and for me. So again, just like when Prabhupada gave me the order to do the picture book project, I thought I'd have forever to ask him about it. And similarly with Gurudev. So then he left in 2000, appeared to leave, pretended to leave in 2010 of December. So then there was still the work of the art book to do, which I hadn't even started yet. So <coughs> I was always tinting her blue for Gurudev's books, but now that I was going to show the paintings for the Prabhupada's books plus Gurudev's books, I didn't know what to do. And I believe that they are both pure devotees, so why would I be getting apparently contradictory instructions? So then, um, I met Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharti Goswami Maharaj in 2012 and after I got to know him a bit, I put this question to him. So he said that the pure devotee will, will speak according to what Leela's, he said they're both right according to the bobs that they were experiencing at the time of speaking when so many Leela's would come in. So I said, well I know the I know the scriptures say she's blue, so what Leela could have been going on in Prabhupada's mind that he said to make her golden? You know, and again you hear, oh Prabhupada just gave us information of Vaidhi Bhakti and just about Krishna's God and all that. And then Gurudev picked up where Prabhupada left off. But then, again that's not true, but then confirmed, hearing from Srila Bharati Maharaj, he said, in the morning, Mother Yasoda is waiting for Srimati Radhika to come and cook for Krishna. So she's waiting and waiting, going out of the house, coming back, looking down the road, coming back, and then she becomes so absorbed in Radharani, because she's late, that she also develops that golden complexion, just like um, Krishna did when he's feeling separation from Radharani at Emli Tala. So that was a perfect uh, reconciliation. reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Very first um, record album of Srila Prabhupada. And this is uh, some artist did his kind of abstract version of that same cover the original cover of the Srimad Bhagavatam that Prabhupada had brought from India. And when Prabhupada first gave me that, um, that cover, he said a friend of his did it in India for him, under his direction. And you'll see on the back, I believe on the back of this, there is a photo of Srila Prabhupada at 26 Second Avenue, in between his uh, apartment where I got initiated, a lot of people got initiated, where he translated a lot of his books by dictaphone machine, where he offered his boga with his what we called, we didn't know what the ceremony was called, we just called it bells, because he, he had two bells. Um, one was in between these two fingers, one was in between these two fingers and he would do the two bells at the same time. It was such a resonant, <laughs> deep tingling. So in between his apartment and the uh, very first Iskan temple, the 26th Avenue temple, there was a courtyard. And in that courtyard, we used to have the Sunday love feasts. And there were ledges, there was a garden like here, like outside of Prabhupada's quarters, and they were very short ledges about that <coughs> high. Uh, and, and then there was pathways, and then the ledge, and then the garden. So all the guests and devotees we used to sit on the ledges or on the ground in that garden. And the devotees would share whatever we had heard from Prabhupada to all the guests. It was completely packed wall to wall, mm -hmm. temple and garden. And this is um, Srila Prabhupada's very, very first 
uh, Bhagavad Gita when they just printed part of it. That is, the 1972 version was the Macmillan version when they finally agreed to print the whole thing with all the purports. But this one just has several purports and all the verses. And Govindadasi did this drawing of the universal, Krishna's universal form for the cover. Govindadasi and Gursundar were like Prabhupada's very first servants as husband and wife team. Mm -hmm. And they used to go everywhere with him and like the Brajanath and Vrinda mm -hmm. of Srila Gurudev's manifest pastimes. And so Prabhupada would train, give her so many drawings to do, which she did, she and her husband, under um, his guidance for his teachings of Lord Chaitanya which when we did the paintings for teachings of Lord Chaitanya, he said just copy how the line drawings are because they were done under his direction and just turn them into paintings. <laughs> and this is my painting, original painting for his teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Um, when he came back from his first trip to San Francisco, came back in April of 67. I believe 1975, that's when, right after the Mayapur festival, we all followed Srila Prabhupada to Vrindavan, where he gave that series of lectures, and here he's sitting on the Vyasasana there. Wow. And wow, this brings back a lot of old memories. Um, I don't know exactly what year this, these photos are, but in 1976, I went to see Prabhupada in Mayapur, and it was the same scene of Hari Sari Prabhu massaging him while we had the darshan of Prabhupada. <laughs> so in 75, I was the only artist that didn't get to go to India. And in 1976, I was the only one who got to go to India. So I had all the other artists' sketches with me and I was showing them one after another to Prabhupada and he was commenting on all of them and if you saw any detail that was off like you know in the paintings, the sketches were for his nectar of devotion and also for his first canto reprint of first canto, third volume, Srimad Bhagavatam so in the Nectar of Devotion, there's the story of Hasyuras of showing, it, it gets so subtle. Hasyuras, they're showing the teeth, there's not showing the teeth, just smiling and with the mouth open, with pastimes of each kind of Hasyuras. So one, the mendicant, uh, was coming to Mother Yasoda to beg alms, and Krishna was hiding behind Mother Yasoda and said, I'm afraid that he's gonna throw me in his bag and take me away. So he started laughing. So Prabhupada said, oh, his, his dhoti should be uh, longer. So he would give very, very little details of all the sketches. So they were, there'll always be mistakes with conditioned souls, but so much of it was done under his direction, except when we made long, bunches of hair. Because as soon as I saw in, him in Mayapur, he said, are you still painting Krishna with big bunches of hair? <laughs> and I said, no, Prabhupada. He said, that is advancement. <laughs> <laughs> and Merlin Dar was going to do a painting of, you know, when Lord Shiva got all that knowledge and all the, um, what do you call it, the, the uh, weapons mm -hmm. to destroy the three planes of the demons mm -hmm. and um, so he's just about to shoot but Merle Dar hadn't done a sketch I had done the sketch at the last minute for, for Merle Dar to show Prabhupada and I made three airplanes because they were called planes with uh, like swastikas on her to show that it was India or something I didn't know so Prabhupada <laughs> looked at the airplanes he said not like that. 
their cities, their flying cities. Oh. So that one was totally changed. You really need a guru. <laughs> This is, I think it's Rukmini Dwarkadish, and in 1974 was Prabhupada's first smashing of the artists about the long hair. We would make very long, wide hair on Krishna and very long sideburns like uh, Jewish payas. <laughs> and in 1974 he started rejecting paintings and pointing out the paintings that he was rejecting. And then he said the deities also, Krishna's hair and the deities should also be up to his shoulders. The BBT was doing a reprinting of the Krishna book and me and the um, production manager, Radha Balaba, wanted to substitute the old Krishna book paintings that we did for the Krishna book because we thought technically not good and substituted for now our technically better pictures. But when Prabhupada saw what we wanted to substitute it with, he was extremely angry to the point of shaking, holding the picture and speaking so loudly that you can almost hear it across the street. He said if they want to replace it, they have to replace it with the same pastime, but better. For example, in the original Krishna book, we had Vasudev crossing the Jamuna River, carrying Krishna in, a, in his arms, and um, there's a jackal in the distance, because since he saw the jackal, Vasudev, he knew it wasn't going to be so deep. And it actually opened for him, the Jamuna River, just like the Indian Ocean opened in the Bible, so he was able to walk across, but we didn't have um, Sheshanag over his head, like an umbrella. So we wanted to, uh, we proposed to get rid of that one and put in just like Krishna playing his flute. He said, you can't put a general picture in, because Prabhupada had, just like here you see, so many paintings. So this was in Los Angeles, here, it's Prabhupada in Los Angeles. I believe that's Los Angeles. And Prabhupada had the Krishna book paintings and other paintings, like for the Chaitanya Chari Taimura, all over his wor walls. And he would chant his japa, going from one room to the other. Perhaps you saw the Acharya video. And he said, and he used to put flowers on the paintings. And he said, these paintings, these Krishna book paintings, are our ISKCON motto. You can't just reject them. But then later, he's, when we did the 10th canto, we did it with all the same pa pastimes, but with all the proper details. So that was acceptable to him. This one here is a copy of my oil painting that is about half that size in its original. And you can see the example of Krishna with big long hair here. <laughs> so later, we digitally cut the hair and made it very short oh. and used that in later printings. <laughs> and this one, you can usually tell when it's an original when it's smaller. Uh -huh. So this one is an original painting, which was originally used in my original painting, which was originally used in Srila Prabhupada's teachings of Lord Chaitanya. And he himself specified the exact shape of the book that he wanted, two by three rather than three by four. So all the paintings were done in that, in those proportions. Sometimes uh, he was with us in the same city. We spent the two-month marathon in Los Angeles, working day and night, sometimes 22 hours a day, on the paintings. <coughs> and every time a painting was finished, the devotees who were going to see Prabhupada brought it to him. 
even if he was in India, they would go by plane and bring that particular volume to him. They were, whoever was going to see him anyway. So he would see the 17 books as they were coming out. And uh, we were actually a few weeks late in missing, in making this, the two month deadline. But if we hadn't had that deadline, it would have taken years. He <laughs> was speaking on a morning walk to the BBT managers. He said, I want it rushed because I've completed everything. Not only Chaitanya Charitamrita, but also the um, fifth canto. But the press isn't keeping up with me. So I want everything very fast. So the press manager said, yes, maybe in six months we can have it all done. No, I want it done in two months. And when they said impossible, he said, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary. So then Ramaswara called a meeting. Prabhupada called devotees all over, from all over the world, just like he did in 1970 for his Krishna Book Marathon. The Krishna Book Marathon, he called devotees from all over America and put somebody in layout, put somebody in making the plates for the printing. And uh, he, set, he set a pace so that all of his books would come out during his transcendental lifetime. I mentioned the other day on Prabhupada's disappearance day, like he said, one day Mr. A will have the editing, then it will go to Mr. B, then Mr. C for proofreading. And he had the composers work 12 hours each, the two devotees, ladies who were on the composing machines. So that 24 hours there was work for the marathon. And um, in 1976, when Ramaswara and I uh, met with Prabhupada in Mayapur, they were proposing a brand new, totally different, exciting cover for life uh, beyond birth and death. And Prabhupada rejected it. It was really very interesting. But Prabhupada rejected it, and he said, it's your... It's your um, disease that you always like to change something. I learned from my medical um, practice that if you change the package, then uh, you'll lose your business and the, the trademark will be lost. So he wanted us to keep the same cover, even in different languages. Like you see, is it the same language? Oh, it's different. But say, oh, it's different. Not, this is probably two different, uh, two different volumes. You know, like Krishna Book Volume One. Okay, so then, so that's why here you see that even though this is in different language, it still has the same covers. Mm -hmm. Who I was initiated with in September or October of 1966. And I'm remembering one letter that Prabhupada wrote to Rupanuga about the swarup of the soul. And that's when Prabhupada gave the example of the seed. Everything there is in the seed of a tree in potential. And by proper watering and sunlight, whatever is already in the seed is developed to a plant or a tree. So he's establishing that the sarup is already fixed, mm -hmm. but in potential as a seed. <coughs> this is Lokanath Maharaj Bhavananda, uh, Jaya Pitaka Maharaj way in the back. And this painting here for the fifth canto was done by my god brother Parikit Prabhu. And this is uh, Bharat Maharaj, uh, Jad Bharat. And he, um, he was 
made to be sacrificed by these dacoits and when they were just about to chop his head off the deity of Durga who they were sacrificing him to, Kali the deity broke open because she was so angry that you want to hurt my devotee? Mm -hmm. my lord's devotee? and then she came out and with all of her lady uh, ghoul assistants they cut off the heads, sliced off the heads of all the dacoits and drank their blood. So when Pariket was doing that, he wanted to get in the mood. So he took a club-like or sword-like object, closed the doors of the Los Angeles temple, closed himself in and started dancing around <laughs> the temple all by himself. So he came out so fabulously. <laughs> Oh, these are some very old Dr. Godhead. Uh, this is like way back in 1968 is when myself and the other artists did these paintings. And Prabhupada would very kindly use them on the cover of his Back to Godhead magazines. This one here was the very first Back to Godhead magazine, which came out before I joined in 1966. As it says here, September 1966. And then gradually when we came, he started having us, well, actually one reason that this doesn't have any color in it is because the Back to Godheads were originally printed on a little I guess you call it a mimeograph machine. Mm. It was about this wide and about twice as long. And it was in the, um, I don't know whether to say, oh, here's the, the, the years. Um, this, this is 66, it's going like that, right. So, I don't know whether to say the back of the temple or the front of the temple because you have to come in the back mm -hmm. and Prabhupada's Vyasasana was in the front. Mm -hmm. So I guess as soon as you walk in, okay. uh, Gargamuni used to work this crank <laughs> press machine and that was producing these Back to Godhead magazines. And the devotees, right after lunch, under the supervision of he was brahmachari at that time, Satsuru. Mm -hmm. he, um, he would coordinate that all the devotees right after lunch would sit in rows in the 26th Second Avenue Temple. That's where we took prasadam and then it was turned into a um, press room. Huh? A printing, a press room. Uh. Yeah, printing press room. And we collated all the pages. You know what that means? You have piles and then you uh. <laughs> put page one on page two, page three. And then they were stapled and we would go to all over the place and distribute the Back to Godhead magazines. Wow. And one magazine that was done on the stencil press machine, when Rai Rama, he was the editor, the chief editor of Back to Godhead at that time, and he uh, had me do this stencil drawing of Krishna stealing the gopis' clothes on the Jamuna, and the gopis are praying for their clothes back, you know, after they did Kachayani worship. So I couldn't even use a pencil, it was just like a scrape out thing. And the part that was scraped out, that would get filled in with the ink. Right. So that was put in his 1967 Back to Godhead. And at that time, we were in New York, and Prabhupada was in uh, San Francisco, opening his second Iskand temple. And so Rai Rama sent him an advance copy. And then I went to... Montreal to help them 
in the early period of opening that temple. And while we were in Montreal collating the magazine, Prabhupada called Rai Rama and said, I think that all the magazines haven't been fully collated and stapled yet. So that picture of Krishna stealing the gopi's clothes and the commentary, which was copied from a Gita Press publication, because we copied it from their painting, that this picture is symbolic, showing that ultimately one must stand naked before the Lord. So Prabhupada said, so you haven't completed the stapling, rip it out of every one of my magazines. He said, this is exactly what I came to your country to defeat, and now you're putting it in my magazine. This is real. It really happened. The gopis are real. Krishna is real. They really wanted him as their beloved or husband. They really did the austerities. He really stole their clothes. So we had to be very careful to get everything authorized by him, which a few years later, I made a similar mistake because, again, just to show that we need not only the books, but the person, Granta Bhagwat and person Bhagwat. So in his third canto and the Krishna book, it explained that when Krishna was performing Rasalila with the gopis, their dresses became loosened, their hair became loosened, everything became like wild. So that's how I painted them. I brought like 10 devotees to pose, it was great, the pictures got developed really quickly because you know, we were with the press, devo with the uh, cameraman and they were to immediately develop the film in an hour. Then I did the painting, was, we put it in Prabhupada's third canto and I was thinking that this is so much better than the one that my god sister Devahuti did mm -hmm. because she had copied hers from a very simple Indian picture. Mm -hmm. you no, know, that's stylized. <coughs> but with hers, everything was bona fide clothing, mm -hmm. not wild hair, but simplistic. And mine was more quote unquote realistic with shading and everything. And Prabhupada said, you ruined my book, rip it out of my book. Wow. So much for my knowing what's best. <laughs> it's right to all of us, like me and Achyutananda, Brahmananda, Gargamuni, just like this letter, he would write to me, and then he would write another letter to somebody else, another letter to somebody else, and the letter was addressed to the whole list of us, but he'd write little things to each one of us. So, he would write these um, aerograms, they'd be on aerograms. A lot of them would be on aerograms with a list of the different things, different answers. And then in the Chaitanya Chari time read time, when there was no time to write back and forth with the snail mail, because there was no internet, we would fax the questions. Sometimes I would write in my handwriting, because I didn't know how to type in those days. I would write the questions, then we would fax the questions to Prabhupada, his secretary, Paramahamsa Swami, would read him the questions, he would dictate the answers, and then Paramahamsa Swami would um, <coughs> write the answers in between our questions and fax back the answers, because it had to come back Quick. quick, very, very quickly. I mean, he, when he wrote these letters, he would explain how the color of Brahma's lotus flower, the directions that Brahma was um, was looking in, what the Shiva Linga looked like, that the um, young girls were worshiping. You know, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and uh, grabbed everything that was meant for the Shiva Linga. <coughs> so lots and lots of letters back and forth with the artists. So I was painting in Prabhupada's quarters and Kirtanananda was the cook at that time. 
Kirtananda and Achutananda. And Prabhupada requested Kirtananda to make me two glasses of milk a day. Because Prabhupada said that just as fish is good for the material brain, milk is good for the material milk is good for the spiritual brain. <laughs> so then there was also a big jar of glubjamins. And while I was painting, sometimes Prabhupada would take a scoopful and feed me glubjamins while I was painting. <laughs> He was very encouraging to his little <coughs> baby daughter. <laughs> oh yeah, he also posed for Lord Nishringadev in that same first room at 26 Second Avenue where I was painting. First he called me over to a, um, there was a poster on his wall, way up on his wall, that Hayagriva had brought from India and given to him. In the middle was Vishnu in water, causal ocean, and then around were circles, maybe two inches in diameter, of the ten pastime avatars. So Prabhupada pointed to the one of Lord Nishringadev, two inches, and he wanted me to make a big painting of that for all of his temples. All means there was three temples at the time. So it was too small to actually see very well. So Prabhupada became the movie director and he made Gargamuni and his brother Brahmananda as the actors. And he had one of them sitting down on a typical old-fashioned wooden chair, like that brown wood there. And he'd have the other one sprawled across his lap. <laughs> and then I would draw that because I didn't think at that time of taking photos. And I would mentally make a picture of it more than even drawing it. And then Prabhupada himself posed for Lord Nishringadev like this. And he said, O oh Lord, in your lotus palms you have long lotus nails with which you ripped apart the demon Hiranyakashipu. So because the Lord manifests through his pure devotee, I could practically see the long nails coming out from <laughs> Prabhupada's hand. So he was posed and then he went like this with his eye. Oh, it hurt so much to do that. But he did it. And then, again, because I didn't have a photo, I stupidly asked him, could you do that again? <laughs> and he did it again. Because he wanted to show how Lord Nishringadev's eyes were cross-eyed. <laughs> so then I was doing the painting in what we called the altar room, because that's where the altar was, that's where Prabhupada did his bells mm -hmm. for offering boga, saying <coughs> little arti, and that's where the, the second Iskand Jagannath came and Prabhupada installed them first on a, the three wooden chairs and kind of wiggled them with his arms into place. And that's where the devotees would make chapatis and prepare for the Sunday love feast. So that's the room that Prabhupada invited me to paint in. So when I was painting Lord Nishringadev, he walked in from his room, which is the next room, where he did his translation work, slept, um, greeted guests, took prasadam. He came into the room that I was and he said, there should be blood all over, all over the painting. So I looked at him surprised and he said, if God is not ferocious, then where does ferocity come from? So I made blood everywhere. And then um, the second painting that I did of Lord Nishingadev, 
I asked him about making, because he was ferocious, I asked him about making Anantadev, who was behind and above him, ferocious, because he was sitting on Anantadev with the hoods of Anantadev, like a, mm. an umbrella. And he said to the devotees, he wrote me in one of these short letters here, to the devotee, Anantadev is not ferocious, but to the demons, he's ferocious. So I made him in a ferocious way. He was teaching proper temple etiquette. And he said that when you bow down to your spiritual master or any pure devotee, you bow down in the front, front ways. And when bowing down to Takuji, you bow down with your left side. Why left side? Because you're saying, I can't see you, but please you see me. So I'm lying there so you can see me. Please glance over me so that I can someday see you. who were in charge of the press and they would show Prabhupada the books they were printing like the first um, teachings of Lord Chaitanya they did here and many wow. other books also back to Godhead magazine Before that, Prabhupada came to Boston, where uh, Kirti Raj wasn't then in charge. Adwaita was, Adwaita and Udav. And when Prabhupada saw the press, like the deities were downstairs on the first floor, and the press was on the next floor up. And when Prabhupada saw the big long press, he offered his full <laughs> flat dandavats. Wow and said the Pranam Mantra to his Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Jai Nityavila Prabhishtam, to his Gurudev. And then he said, I want the press to remain as clean as glass. Then it will last a long time. And then Adwaita asked him, can you name the press? Because he had recently named New Vrindavan, knew something else. So he said, it is already named, this kind press. And he said, the press is my heart. Oh, he said, the press is the heart of Iskan. So Adwaita said, you're the heart of Iskan, Prabhupada. So Prabhupada said, the press is my heart. And then he went downstairs where the um, other press departments were, like binding, layout, photography. And there was a big crowd around him, so he could hardly walk. Somehow he got through like a swan, just going through. He said, in India, everybody who speaks Hindi has a Gita Press publication. So I want that around the world, everyone who speaks English should have an ISKCON Press publication. It was a couple of years later that it would, he changed it to Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे हर हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हर 